You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Do you swipe left or right on Immediately what? I swiped left. Is that a, that's bad, right? That's an X. That's oh. a decline. Okay. No, no, I didn't even want to pay the respect to say, yeah, excuse me, I really dis- despise Lynn manuel Miranda. But she, she looks- called me a Lynn manuel Miranda looking motherfucker. It's uncomfortable to talk about sex, but sometimes it's important to get uncomfortable. Sex Talk with My Mom is the best mom-son podcast about sex. It's the only one as well. My mother is a cougar. My son is a clown. In a nutshell, my dad died. So my mother decided to create a YouTube channel all about sex, like all mothers do. And then my son decides to use my material in his stand-up comedy routines. And thus, Sex Talk with My Mom was born. Are you trying to imitate other famous comedian podcasters? I was inspired. I was lightly inspired. Relax. By, Ga- by Gabrius. Gabrius. All right. Gabrius. As we might have mentioned earlier, this is my mother, Karen Lee Poder. <laughs> I'm Cam Poder. And uh, we're chatting about sex and everything else you typically wouldn't talk about with a parent. Trying to make you laugh. Trying to open up that conversation around sex. Trying to take your mind off the doldrums of COVID-19. That's a good That's a good way of putting it. We're going to take your mind off and create new and positive energy in your life. That's wonderful. How you doing, mother? Uh, we're, I'm doing okay. How are you doing, son? <laughs> I, started, I asked you and your toes started tapping. I'm tapping. What's going on with the tap tap? Uh, I'm just tapping. I'm just ready to get into this lovely podcast on a Monday morning after a funeral of my friend. Oh, we are dedicating this episode to my friend from like, I don't even know, since I was 18 years old, Cheryl Brand, my friend passed away and um, we're going to celebrate our life by telling a few stories today and uh, we're going to keep do, the keep the happy vibes going. Do you have a story you wanted to share about Cheryl? I, I do, actually. And I think I might have shared it on the podcast before. Cheryl's like one of those people that had the best laugh and is always ready to party no matter what. And I lived next door to her in the sorority. Big surprise. And what do they, what do you mean big surprise? It sounds like you you had similar mentalities when it comes to partying. Oh yeah. I was always a big partier in college. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, I knew that, mother. I don't know if the sneaky freaks knew it. I wasn't as much of a big partier. Yeah. Did you know that? I I knew that too and I think the sneaky freaks would know that as well. <laughs> but anyway, oh, Cheryl's up for a party all the time. And um so I guess the sorority walls were thinner than I thought. Uh huh. And I would, I had um, uh, a regular, uh, I would say it was, uh, I don't know if you, what we call him then, but I would call a fuck buddy now. FWB, friends with benefits? Yeah, I would call him a friends with benefits, a fuck buddy, or whatever, someone who I was very attracted to physically. But not emotionally? Uh, no. So no. it was someone to fuck? It was a fuck buddy. That's nice. Anyway, the bottom line is that every time that I'd be with my fwb we would be having some crazy ass sex knocking on the walls and cheryl's walls were right next to mine <laughs> and she had shelves bookshelves put up and every time we'd get bang up against the wall her bookshelves would fall down <laughs> and this and you know what and this is the kind of person she was instead of getting pissed like most people would because she'd have to continue to put these shelves back she was thinking it was the funniest thing so that's that one of my hilarious. favorite memories of her and uh yeah that Aww. kind of sum, uh, sums up our relationship right there. Sweet Cheryl. <laughs> Sweet Cheryl. Very different than my approach to when my senior year neighbor was having sex. You were not as happy as she was. No, I certainly was not. And I went over at five in the morning several days and <laughs> knocked on her door in my boxers and informed her that whatever's going on in here is way too loud. You're putting into, you put a kibosh on the fun sex she was having. Yes. The man that she was fucking... Later became a famous musician. Really? I went to his concert uh, maybe last year. I went up to him and I said, hey, you remember me? Like, yeah, you're the one of the boxers, the, the big fucking boner killer. Yeah, that's exactly how he remembered me. God. Anyway, I, I don't want to make this uh, this uh, this remembrance and dedication about me and my and my. I uh, think it's good. It's a good, it's a, it is good to... to Put the juxtapositioning there. Exactly right. That's a, that's a perfect actual, what do you call that? A yin and yang. Yeah. Cheryl is a very giving person and um, may this episode be especially joyous for her. That's right. 
All we'll right. Do it for her. And I think we should start by with a new segment of our show. And it's called Hit On or Shit On. Yes. Because we've realized that a lot of you fucking sneaky freaks get in touch with us. And uh, people in our lives get in touch with us. And they'll either hit on us or shit on us. Yeah. So I'd like to begin and uh, talk about a sneaky freak uh, known as my grandmother. <laughs> How old is she? 86? No. She's she's 88. 88. She's, yeah. she's getting up there. Her mind is... Is sharp as a tack. Yeah. So I... Her mind is sharp as a tack. Her body is the problem. She's got Parkinson's and it's uh, it affects her mobility. Yes. But not so, her mental state. So I wished her a happy early Valentine's Day over the phone. And she asked me if I had any special Valentine in my life. And I said no. And her response was, well, that's nothing new. <laughs> God... I guess the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. The fuck is it? That's my mother. You're fucking skewering me at 88 years old. I know. It's so That's a, and then I have her, her caregiver in the background. Yes. She's going, oh, does Cam has a, have a girlfriend? <laughs> and my grandma goes, no. And she, then I hear the caregiver go, oh. <laughs> Like so disturbed and distressed like, still. Like I'm, yeah. it was as if she had just found out that I will be single for the rest of my life. Yeah, well. <laughs> I got the two of them back to back. That's Those are two shit-ons, by the way. Those are those not hit-ons. Those are not hit-ons. By neither. Although the uh, caregiver does. Tend to hit on you. She does. Frequently. On my TikTok wall. <laughs> I'll put a TikTok up. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll say, hi. It says, hi, Cam. She, in case you don't know, it, she, she's constantly complimenting me on my hair, which I love. Yeah, and she was, first she hated it. Yes, and I love that both her and and my mother's other caregiver they all had a they both weighed in on your hair. What's kind of everyone's got a fucking opinion on the fucking hair? Yeah, you go and ask your other grandma what she thinks about your hair. She thinks it's disgusting. <laughs> okay. They they none of the grandparents like facial hair or longer hair. I'm I, determined. I don't give a flying fuck because guess what I got? I got another DM. Someone slid into the DMs. And hit on or shit on. Well, you tell me. This person says, What beautiful hair exclamation, exclamation, exclamation with a heart. Oh, that's nice. That's a hit on, right? That's a hit on. Guess who that's from? Again, the caregiver? Rob the Thatcher. No. <laughs> Rob the Thatcher. Rob the Thatcher fucking slid you know, in and hit on I, me. I, you know what? Rob the Thatcher seems like he's very open-minded. I Okay. Does Rob the Thatcher not totally remind you of the guy in Schitt's Creek? I think his name is Jake. The one that no. is constantly making yes. out with who, yeah. like yes. anyone who's there. Rob the Thatcher seems like he would make out with anybody. Yeah, I love that. I love it too. It's hilarious. Too bad he lives all the way on the other side of the pond. Yes. I did ask him how he's enjoying his Italian girl, his Italian stallion girlfriend. And you know, very funny response. He said, "Yes, still thatching away, and still with the beautiful Italian. She streaks and whinnies like a mare, not a stallion." Oh my god! I love this. So man. that visual of her streaking and whinnying, <laughs> like a mare, tremendous. And and it doesn't surprise me at all that he would get some woman that is comparable to his. Uh, Sexual prowess, oh, if you course. will. Oh, of course. We love Rob the Thatcher, the OG, one of the OG sneaky freaks. Did you have any hit on or shit on? I actually did have a, I, I guess I would call this a hit on, and I just, I'm debating on how to respond to it. Let's see. Happy 2021, Karen. By the way, I have no idea who this person is. I would love to hang out with you, especially if you like shooting pool or watching 80s flicks with some nice drinks. Oh. Oh, Yeah. Who doesn't like shooting pool and watching 80s flicks? I, that sounds pretty fun, actually. The only part that sounded fun there was the nice drinks. Um, <laughs> I'm anything but boring. I'm humorous, fun, sarcastic, fiery, and seductive. Oh, that sounds like a great match. And in parentheses, and a bodyguard, so naturally good at, and the at sign, protecting. I love that. You, yeah, of course you would want someone who could a nice be protector? a bodyguard. Yes. A fucking bodyguard? You, you can you imagine this? You seem like a very fun and bubbly woman. Well, that's, that's, that's you got that part right. Look forward to conversing and hearing back from you. Posted my pick at the bottom, cordially. Cordially. I'm not going to mention the name just to protect the uh, the uh, anonymity, anonymity. But uh, cordially, the bodyguard. I have to say, the bodyguard. Um, it, it sounds like you know you 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 gave it your all there. 
But the problem is I have no idea who you are. So I find it very difficult to make any kind of... Um, well, this is... I would mean, who, he's, he's, he gives you a lot of descriptors over here. He's anything but boring. He's yeah. humorous, fun, sarcastic, fiery, and seductive. He sounds like a great guy. And a bodyguard. Should I write back? I'm, I'm taken, but... Apparently, my son is available, and he, especially <laughs> for the bodyguard part. I, I'm just he's interested in your bodyguard services. I think that's great. And that's our and that wraps up our episode. Of, Excuse me. Oh, you have another. I thought we were done. I'm sorry. Oh, I got uh, one more, which is that. Is it a hit on or shit on? Well, it's a little. You'll all, you'll see. So this was on Hinge. Someone uh, liked my photo. Oh. And she said. Mad respect for the tea. I was wearing like a cool t-shirt. Okay. Mad respect for the tea, you Lynn manuel Miranda-looking motherfucker. Okay. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Now, what do you have to say about this? Because for sneaky freaks that aren't aware of this, <laughs> we went to see Mary Poppins Returns, and I never saw such an angry human as sit- that was sitting next to me as my son. He was thoroughly revolted when he saw that rendition and most people love Lynn Wenwell. he's like on every every show every he's all everywhere is, is being revered when I say that I despise <laughs> Lynn Manuel Miranda for no reason for no reason you know exactly the fucking reason because he he botched the, the role of uh, he's not, the chimney sweep he in, didn't botch he single-handedly destroyed the entire <laughs> Mary Poppins remake. He took Dick Van Dyke's part and he tore it to smithereens. Okay, so you're not He happy. is the worst performer. He should never have been cast in that part. He was only cast in that part because he wrote a fucking musical. Who gives a fuck? Called Hamilton. I don't give a flying fuck. It doesn't make him Dick Van Dyke. Okay. So he took down the whole movie. All right, you're getting very hostile. I angry. love Mary Poppins. Okay, and he fucked it up for you. He destroyed it. Okay, all right. He should never be allowed in a fucking movie again. Oh my God. Sure, go write a fucking historical musical, okay, with rap. I don't give a flying fuck. It was it was pretty very, it was pretty well received. I'm not gonna watch that <laughs> if it it depends. If my life depends on it. I've seen it twice and I've seen the movie version. I gotta say, uh, he. Uh, to be honest with you. I like the actress that I saw in the play version better than him. But I, I, absolutely. Okay, he shouldn't I, be acting. He should not be performing. Okay, but he is he is very charismatic in terms of when you see him other than when he's performing. Yeah. People think he's a big shot, a big deal. Oh, they got to put him in Curb Your Enthusiasm, which, by the way, he was acceptable in. Yeah. He was acceptable as a character in Curb Your Enthusiasm because he played kind of like an asshole. <laughs> Why do you think he's an asshole? I, you think he's pompous? I'm not a fan of him. Okay, so this is not a, the best thing. If she wants to, hit, did you? Swipe, she go. She did you swipe me. left or right on? Immediately, what? I swiped left. Is that a, that's bad, right? No, that's an X. That's oh. a decline. Okay. No, no, I didn't even want to pay the respect to say. Yeah, excuse me, I really dis- despise Lin Manuel Miranda. But she, she called looks- me a Lin Manuel Miranda looking motherfucker. Oh my God! Well, you both have a, a dark eyes and the dark hair. What, I got to bleach, bleach my hair to not look like him? Does he have long hair these days? I can't remember. He used to, and now he doesn't. Huh. By the way, I don't think he's particularly that handsome. <laughs> well, I don't I don't think, I think you, that's a, wait, so it went won't. from hit on to, to real shit on without her realizing. Is it more of a compliment to say you look like Glenn manuel or uh, Jake Gyllenhaal? Gyllenhaal in Nightcrawler. Yeah, which one is worse? Wait, Lynn manuel Lin-Manuel was worse than I look Jake. like a, a serial killer or whatever the fuck he plays in Nightcrawler. He, play, he plays like a killer. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I've been told I look like Jake Gyllenhaal in, in specifically in Nightcrawler and Javier Bardem specifically in No Country for Old Men. <laughs> I'd take either of those serial killer murders over Lin-Manuel anytime. Oh my God. That is, that's a very violent reaction. I, I mean, this is... By the way... Lynn Manuel may be getting all his Hamilton crew out here. To, we might, you, you might meet that bodyguard sooner than you think. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, can we move on from this? I, I got all, need to, I got all flustered. So freaking hostile right now. Um, I would like to say that I kind of got hit on and back to hitting on. Um, on the day uh, that I, like literally the moment I found out about my friend, my friend of 40 years death, I get hit on, I think, by my masseuse. Oh. Arthur, I don't know if it's hit on or what, but he he made sure to tell me that he's been COVID tested twice and he's negative. 
And if I wanted a massage, the massage parlor is not open, but I can come to a private room in his house. Oh, wow. Yeah, I hope he, he doesn't get any he, legal he, trouble from you sharing this information. He said it's the same price per hour, and but the tip is up to me. Oh, that's nice. Many Has regards. the tip ever not been up to you? Um, I think it's always been up to me. And, and is the tip a sexual thing? That's what I'm saying. What, what the? I feel like there's something going on here that I'm not aware of. Inviting you to his own house? A private room in his house, but I do need to show him a negative COVID result. Uh, as and we, he as is not we, even aware. Oh, my God. Okay. So, well, so if you want a massage, you got to get a negative COVID test. I guess. I, I don't. Yeah. It's it was a just lot a, to for a massage. It was a lot to 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 process while I was trying to deal with the fact that my <laughs> best friend of forty years had just literally died. It was amazing. I I'm was sitting trying, next to you. And and you're crying, and I text keep after Arthur text. Yeah, text after text after text. I mean, it it, it was like literally the worst timing in the history of. T- <laughs> it, it is like an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. I'm sitting there trying to get over my like complete shock he's going in about the, his rates and then what and then what in what vaccine he got he somehow got the moderna vaccine <laughs> which i'm very well, happy I, for Arthur. i know i mean i don't know what to say now but anyway so that i guess would classify under hitting on although i'm not sure if it was for money or for just uh the companionship uh, what that was that I, I, th- I had one speaking of massages i had one more comment that we i don't know how long we want to make this segment but i had one more comment that someone made uh Regarding our last episode about how to spice up your your Valentine's Day, the sex. Yes. You know, obviously I was into the breathing thing. Yes. And I suggested that. Right. And then someone, St. Charles, decided to say, oh, VD from St. Charles. Valentine's Day. What the fuck is this guy's name? His name is St. Charles. It's oh, a, it's, it's, it's a, uh, uh, you know, a pseudonym. Oh, it's a pseudonym. Okay. St. Charles says, tantric shit. <laughs> Come on, Cam. Well, it was in regards to the... the, the <laughs> I didn't ask to fuck St. Charles. Why well, did, he's what, just what's saying, that about? Apparently, he didn't find that your your techniques were all that uh, romantic. What about this podcast gives people the thought, you know what? I'm going to go fucking shit on these people. I don't know. I it's Particularly I, the, the long-haired hippie boy son. Who looks who a lot looks like, like killers Lynn and Lynn Manuel. Man- <laughs> I don't. I can't go back there. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna. My nose is already starting to run. What would you do if Lin Manuel like, uh, like emailed you and said, I, "I hear you got some beef with me, boy." Let's write a musical about it that you do not perform in. <laughs> You'd be okay Fine. with that. Fine. He's a good musical writer. Fine. I'm good. He knows. He knows he, how he to make. He only won the fucking Tony Award. Fine. I'll give him that. I don't. I don't. I. I don't want to get back. Not to this. mention, he. I think he also won for In the Heights. I'm he, just saying he should never have been cast in Dick Van Dyke's role in. Mary Poppin returns. I will give you that. I will. It was disturbing because, by the way, there is no replacement for Dick. He was in the audience when we, when we watched this screening of it. Did oh you know that? I hope he did not hear you and you. I was audibly criticizing him throughout the whole movie. Well, maybe you shouldn't do that anymore because you never know who's sitting beside you. Well, maybe he shouldn't accept roles that he's not qualified to participate in. Oh God! Okay. All right, moving right along. Oh my God! Let's pull some cards. All right, let's. Let, yeah, and this is the segment, um, which. Both Cam and I, who are completely untrained in reading tarot cards, are going to read tarot cards and interpret them and t- how they are in our life. Now, last time we got two of us got some really not so great cards. Both had swords in it, which terrified the shit out of both of us. Although you I, had did, eight. I did get a nice listener response about how to interpret my tarot card. Oh, would you like to play that for us? I'll give it a little whirl. Our sneaky freak Catherine slid into my DMs at Single Cam Comedy. By saying uh, an interpretation of our last card, which mine was the Eight of Swords, which looked like a very depressing card. Someone bound up all throughout their body. It was a woman bound up. Yes. And uh, it was was related to my dating life, the question that we had pitched. There there was a pool of something underneath her. Like, I'm not sure if it was urination or what was going on. It was probably piss. Piss. So, So Catherine gave me a whole nice reading, and then she finished by saying this. So the main point being that a feeling of being trapped and scared only works if you believe in it. Hope this helps. Thanks for the podcast. It's really funny. I love that little takeaway from that. Yeah. You basically only, if you're scared, 
it's it's just your own self perpetuating cycle, right? That's, yeah. So we could have six years ago not have even started this podcast because we should have listened to Catherine and she would have told you not to be scared anymore and just go fuck. You think that the only reason we have this podcast is because I needed help learning how to fuck? And, so if you compare this oh, jeez. <laughs> But um, maybe freedom is much closer than you think, and maybe it's just about how you're thinking about it, your attitude. If you um, maybe look at what you really want, there might just be a very easy fix, a very easy way to be free and achieve your dreams. How sweet is that? Unbelievable. And some uplifting-ass shit right there. Thank you very much, Catherine. If anyone ever wants to weigh in on these these tarot readings since my mother and i are so well versed in it slide in baby well give us get the phone three one zero three five six three nine two zero that's our phone number give us a text and i only know the last three digits is it time for the sneaky freak tarot card reading that's absolutely right do would you like to go first i will please do <clears throat> what is your question Did my you... question is related to my living space as you know I have uh, a mattress coming here. Yes, that, I know. Uh, I'm not happy about go on. I ordered a king thinking that I was going to move apartments. And, and uh, the apartment I was planning to move into fell through. So now the king is coming to my apartment, which I barely have room to walk around in, in a circle. So my question is... Are you getting rid of this box? Can, will I be able to uh, move into a new place soon that I'm going to enjoy living in? Okay, would you like to pick a card? Yes, I will. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. It is okay. the hermit. Now the question. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck is that <laughs> shit? I cannot believe you picked the hermit. The, the hermit, it's upside down for me. And an upside down hermit, which always means challenges. Wait, it's, what? It's, it, what? How would you interpret it? I can't even believe it. it how it, did we do it again? It, you know, I, last week it was so apparent that it was spot on about the challenges of dating and this we get the the hermit which you were just talking about living alone what the fuck is that but it's upside down so maybe it's the anti-hermit what what is what is the picture it looks like he's walking around with a cane oh and he's got a lamp a lantern are you sure it's not a staff and and by the way it is a staff and by the way there's for some reason underneath him it looks like three shoes but it's probably just waves maybe he's walking on water we're walking on sand, but look at his beard. His beard is quite white and long. And he's looking down as if he's depressed. And but you shit. always liked being a hermit. I'll be a hermit. Can I be a hermit somewhere that's Why a little, are you that has air conditioning? The cards? I'm I'm just preparing for the summer. It's gonna be such a fucking heat wave over here. But it is so we're far from the summer right now. And he's just saying for the next three well, or I got four this months. Mattress. What am I gonna do with the mattress? I don't even want to talk about the mattress. <laughs> I do not want to know why you had to have it sent to my apartment, which is, as First it is. First of all, is all the very... boxes in my apartment, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to leave, get broken into and people try to steal my shit. So that's another reason why I had to get it sent here. Okay. Thank you. I'm now the keeper of all shit. Okay. This I'm is so a, I, over I, the fucking tarot card readings. I know. It's my turn now. Okay. okay what's so your... I'm going to question, uh, will I be uh, living in the current situation I'm in or will I be on to different type of living situation in the near future or future th th coming up? Okay. Something about my living conditions. Yeah, that was a very specific question. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking about possibly staying in this building or moving. So you're asking the same question as me? Yeah, I am. Okay. I thought it was a good question. Okay. Although, What's going on with the rubbing? You're rubbing all the cards? Yeah, the you, fuck this is, is going what you have to do. You're like massaging? Until, until some one card seems to pop out at you. Yeah, one card popped out of me, the fucking hermit. <laughs> it's unbelievable that you got the hermit. And I got, oh, oh, it's upside down. Wheel of Fortune. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck is this? Ah, what is this? Ah. This, is, this looks like a beautiful fucking card. Yeah. Again, it looks like you have all these, there's angels on this thing. They've got little, uh, like a sphinx with a stamp, like a sword. It, look, there's a fucking angel goat who's reading on this thing. Two angels. But you, you're missing the point. I picked up a upside down card, which always means challenges to the Wheel of Fortune. But there's also 
a devil and a snake on there. That's what I'm talking about. There's something screwy going on here. And there's a lot of symbols in this Wheel of Fortune. Oh, boy. I'm going to interpret this as, um, since it was upside down, I was going to say your your home is actually going to remain very stable because it Wheel of Fortune is not going to... Let me take a look at that card. Come, ...come true as my interpretation. And I'm going to interpret it <coughs> as, since it's upside down that there's going to be some challenges to find some place in my life that's going to feel perfect in terms of my comfort levels. Okay. Yeah, there's going to be a few challenges, um, although I would love to know if any sneaky freaks are out there, especially, what was it, Catherine? Yes. We need to find out what these two cards mean. We also had another, there was another tarot card expert that was sending us some shit, and I appreciated that as well. And apparently when you call it shit, they really like that. <laughs> Valentine's Day is coming up. What are you doing for yourself or your partner to get your freak on? We have a solution for you. It's called Like a Kitten's Couples Box. Oh, I love it. Meow. Meow, meow. Now, Mom, do you have any traditions around Valentine's Day? Yeah. I mean, in the past, like your dad used to get me a bunch of Valentine's Day gifts. And how would he do that? He'd have to go from shop to shop to shop, which is kind of gross because some of the stuff, you know, is in CD sex shops. But now we have a little online resource that will create a beautiful box specifically for playing around Valentine's Day. By the way, you can use it by yourself. I'm planning to use it by myself. <laughs> but uh, there are some things for couples that I think it would be really fun to talk about. There's a dark chocolate body paint. First of all, I love dark chocolate. And second of all, I like think the idea of painting on each other's body would be fun. They have never have I ever, but we will the card game for couples. And then they also have cock rings in. Strawberry lube. A vibrating heart. So many cute things. Lingerie is even in here. They really have crafted the perfect gift box. If you're looking for a last minute gift to give a partner or yourself, right now, Like a Kitten is offering our listeners 20% off and free shipping when you go to likeakitten.com slash mom or enter mom at checkout likeakitten.com slash mom 20% off that's how you get a kitten or a cougar to purr oh. Oh. up until now I have not had the option of being good in the kitchen and in the bed why is that I'm great in the bedroom but the kitchen has always kind of given me a lot of stress because I can't really follow directions that well well, not anymore, Mother, because we have Green Chef on our side. Oh, my God. Thank the Lord. Green Chef is the first USDA certified organic meal kit company. That means that Green Chef will send you the perfect ingredients at peak freshness, along with a recipe to teach you how to exactly cook a delicious meal. Even my mother cooked me a beautiful blackened salmon the other night, and I was floored by it. It was blackened salmon déjeuners. But I've tried other ones like the lemon mustard chicken and the Mediterranean shrimp. You know what? It, what's wonderful about this is the ingredients come already pre-measured, perfectly portioned, and mostly prepped. So you can spend less time stressing out about it and more time eating it. If you got a special dietary lifestyle, say you're keto, paleo, maybe even vegan, they got boxes for you. If you go to greenchef.com slash mom90 and use code mom90, MOM90, you can get $90 off and free shipping. That is unbelievable. Just go to greenchef.com slash mom90. The number one meal kit for eating well. It's time for Mom's, mom's news, news, Mom's, mom's news, news, Mom's News. news. It's Mom's News, a segment of the show where my mother shares earth shattering, groundbreaking legendary news that you need to know. And this one is no exception. Man with history of pleasuring himself near horses strikes twice in 24 hours. <laughs> Unbelievable. I could not handle I, I saw this. It's, of course, it's in my favorite tabloid, The Mirror. Do you subscribe to The Mirror at this point? I, 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 like, I literally think I, I'm uh, a member of the staff. Who is on their staff finding these stories about men pleasuring themselves near horses okay well a man with a long history of performing sex acts near horses has done it again for the second time in 24 hours can we get some specifics on the types of sex acts yes. that he has a long history of doing near horses yes malcolm downs 61 has a long long history of pleasuring himself near horses and was last before 
the courts in 2016 when he was jailed for what a judge called totally disgusting behavior. Bestiality. They didn't call classify it that because um, he really is not having sex with them. He he was planning to a doctor's visit to seek libido suppressing drugs, but was arrested. Who's finding him fucking himself near horses? It was a member of the public. The shocked member of the public was about 200 yards away and initially thought Downs was urinating. But it soon became clear he was in the act of masturbate. Just masturbating. Staring at the horse? This this activity went on for three to four minutes. His penis was exposed for about 10 minutes. The matter was reported to the police and the defendant was arrested. He told the officers, I was sat on a bench and I was feeling sexy. So <laughs> I started, he was feeling a sexy time. So I started, he said, after I, I realized it was an offense. Oh, the Mr. Mr. That must have been the prosecutor's uh, asked if he was realized it was offense and he did say yes he did oh i'm glad he came by to the his way senses. he is far from an attractive human being just in my opinion <laughs> Wait, this guy has been tried multiple times yeah. for doing sexual acts by masturbating around horses yes i well, how do you feel about this actually i mean it's it turns them on and he, there, there's something sexual about horse i have to say there was a there was a scene in a book by uh, tom wolf with a horse and, and another horse, like, you know, preparing the horse to be made. I, it was just a very sexual hot scene. You were getting turned on by the horses. I was turned on when I was reading about it. I wasn't exactly watching it and masturbating it in front of a live horse. But I have to say there is something sexually uh, turned on by horses for women. I, I don't know about men. I have never felt aroused near any horse well, I didn't say I got aroused when I'm seeing horses. Well, it I'm sounds just, like you were dripping wet when you were fucking reading this <laughs> Tom Wolf book. just reading a Tom Wolf book. You know. Anyway, Re- let, me t- let me finish. He was charged and released on bail, but within 24 hours was seen by an off-duty female police officer doing the same thing in the same area. Get was, out of town. Her attention was drawn to this defendant at the end of the emergency access road. He, he had his penis in his hand and was masturbating, the court heard. Why is he so public about it? it was Why not, doesn't he get the horse and bring it like behind a shed or something? It was not safe for the officer to stop, so she sounded her horn to signal for him to stop, and he was arrested, taken to custody, and again, candid and straightforward interview. He did confirm he thought he had a problem, asked why he did this, and particularly in public, he said he got a thrill, even though he knew it was wrong. He accepted if children had been in the area and seen what he was doing, it frightened them. And you're telling me to wrap it up. Okay. Well, I've heard enough with the fucking horses. All right. I, I think I just, I, my determination. Nay. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, my actual thought is that who gives a fuck? If the guy wants to masturbate in a field next to a horse, I'm all for well, it. Well, that's when you told me to wrap it up. I was getting to the point where there are kids in that area and they don't need to see him fucking oh. whack, whacking the winky, winking the wacky. Well, he just shouldn't be masturbating in public. Well, that's probably what is going on here, except for for whatever What's reason, it's the- always near a stable. <laughs> It doesn't matter. I don't care about the stable situation. There's, the headline of this article should be this man continuously masturbates in public near children, too. In, in an eyeline of children. Not well, appropriate. Nobody wants to see that. And I, looking at him now, he's not an attractive guy to be seen anyway. No one wants to see him masturbating. I'm surprised that the horseman is not the most attractive guy. With or without horses. All right. Anyway. Thank you very much for that epic rendition of mom's, mom's news. news mom's news and now's a fun time I'm, I'm getting ready i'm gearing it up i'm already geared up yeah you're gearing up for a nice snooze fest i am i need a nice relaxation it's it's better than a nice little ambient go ahead it's because it's cam's uppers it's a place to be Fun living is the life for me. It's Cam's Uppers. This is the segment of the show where I get to share something very near and dear to my heart. Something that's been swimming around my thoughts these days that I think would be nice to put out into the world. Something that my mother typically finds majorly boring. Or downright snooze fest. Or... It's just this <laughs> oh, just me a big sighing. old sigh. Just me sighing. That's all I can say. Go ahead. Let's hear it. Lay it on us. Well, I was between two today. You're always between two, and they're both boring. Uh, you don't even know what the fuck they are. All right. What are they? Okay. One of them involves something that you need to know about, because I already know that you are you might die early because of this. I'm going to take a guess. Yep. Breath work. Bingo. I'm reading the book called Breath by James Nestor. Phenomenal. Phenomenal book. If you are a mouth breather, 
you're fucked. Okay. What if you're not a mouth breather? You're good to go. But basically, no matter no matter what the fuck condition your body is in, however old or young, how much you work out, what you eat, none of it matters if you're not breathing correctly. This is the bottom line. So if you are you, do you breathe out of your mouth? I actually don't. I breathe out of my nose. Yeah, I think you're actually right about that. Yeah, I just out of so, one nostril. I think you you breathe out. Of. No, I breathe out of both my nostrils. What do you mean one nostril? I tend to hear when I'm editing this podcast is like there's always like one that's completely plugged up that I have to. This like, nonsense. Yeah. I don't know where you hear these from. Yeah, I have nothing wrong with my nostrils. Here's a fun fact. What? And I, I'm not sure if we shared this on the show already, but I'll repeat it just in case because I think it's very important. What organ is most similar to the genitals? Oh, it's funny that you say that because I did a TikTok question on that. Yeah, because you fucking stole it from me. Yeah. I said it to you and then you immediately went to TikTok and you it's repeated it as if it were your own fucking thing. The nose. The nose. No credit nose. was given to this. Yeah. And then some guy wrote, that's why we always blow our noses. Yes. I thought that the, was clever. Can you believe it? The nose is most similar to the genitals because it has erectile tissue in it. Is this why my boyfriend Dees is always picking his nose? That's probably why. Probably it's playing with the testi- playing, it's his just, testicles, basically. It's another way of playing with your dick. But here's... You, Wait, when you say simil- similar it to... It has gen- erectile dis- are you, tissue. Are you talking about like balls, stalk, the whole thing, or just the dick? Or what part of the body is this? I think it's the whole thing. But the I'm whole, just going to go there. I didn't you're get talking about the, the same thing with women with the vulva. Are you talking yes. about boobs? Yeah, because when you get breasts? aroused the vulva, it gets enlarged. Yeah, the same thing. You're, you're talking about the entire portion or you, inside, outside, the whole business? I'm talking the part. Basically, there's erectile tissue I think you're in making our this genitals. Whole, I'm, I'm, and there's erectile tissue in the nose. And guess what the erectile tissue in the nose does? It regulates how much air is coming through one nostril versus the other. And it switches. You know what? Regularly. I think your nose looks a lot like Lynn Manuel's. Mom? <laughs> what are you trying to fucking completely derail Cam's uppers? No, but I just thought about I wonder if Lynn Manuel has is the same type of nose as you. I don't look I bear no resemblance to Lynn Manuel fucking Miranda. Okay. Okay, let's go back to uh, we're not gonna go down that road again. I'm just saying Talk I about want, Cam is this is supposed to be Cam's uppers, not Cam's downers. Well, how do you breathe? It, through my fucking nose, obviously. No, with one nostril or both? It switches. Everyone switches. One th- but yours doesn't switch. So yours is just con- constantly plugged. No, it's not. Just one plug. Where are you getting this idea from? And so then I start thinking about this, and I start dreaming now about about different remedies. Because when I'm on an airplane, I get such a raging migraine oh, I'm upon aware. descent. I am aware. And so I'm thinking... What if there's something that can moisten the air going into my nose? Would it be weird if I'm sitting next to someone and I pull out a contraption that I've invented myself and just stick it over my nose yeah, to that, allow some... No, that's some, called... They have those. I think your sister has one she sleeps with. And Like a neti pot type situation? No, it's, it's like a mask of some sort. Oh, like a CPAP? Yeah. I'm not doing a CPAP. I could just see bringing... You just, <laughs> bring a CPAP onto the fucking plane? Just take some Sudafed and go to bed. The Sudafed gets me all hyped up. Of course it does. Uh, it gets me anxious. I can't handle it. Anyway, that's... I guess we'll stick with that for Cam's uppers. I was going to get into the other thing, which I think is more emotional, which I kind of liked as well, but... Well, why don't we save that for next week? Yeah, I knew you would not want to keep going with Cam's uppers. Cam's uppers it's is the, the place, place to be. be. And you know what time it is right now. What is it, mother? It's time for a little sneaky freak convo. Oh, we're reporting on some texts and questions from our sneaky freaks? Yes, we are. We love when you text us. We do. You can hit us up at any time, day or night. Right. There's definitely several ways you can do it. 310-356-3920. That's it. Very excited. Uh, By the way, this is a little earlier than I wanted to announce it, but I want to say, if you haven't texted us yet, text us because... We're doing a very fun party. It's a giveaway. It's a fiesta on Clubhouse, the new social media app. You need an invite to get on Clubhouse. Elon Musk is giving talks over there. Gary V. They're all. It's a great sex app. Sex talk with my mom. So sex talk with my mom is having a live show on there. We're giving away prizes and all this fun shit. It's on at 8 p.m. Pacific time on February Feb, uh, 18th. It's going to be a post Valentine's Day it, party. It's a Thursday evening, you guys, you little sneaky freaks. We would love to have you there. So text us. Participate. So if you text us, we'll send you an invite to join the app. 
and then we'll all fucking hang out together and you can win some prizes. It'll be a great time. Anyway, that's 310-356-3920. And by the way, mm -hmm. it's not that easy to get in a clubhouse. You got to know someone. So we're giving you the invitation to get in. Get in. Get in. And of course, it's free. And once you text us, you know, you can text us whatever. You can text us something what, like what Liz said, which she said, Good morning. I'm really curious about Cam's progress on pleasuring his own asshole. <laughs> These are questions from my daughter and her friend, both 18. Do you guys actually like having their balls stepped on? What? Do guys actually like having their balls stepped on? Well, let's stop right there yeah. and we'll answer that. Um, I have never met a guy that enjoyed having their balls stepped on. I've, I've seen it. I've been to a party where a guy was getting his balls whipped. Okay. I don't think that most men enjoyed that kind of pain. But some men do. So... Uh, yeah. And the next question was, what about when these men get kicked in the balls? Does again, that turn them on? Again, most men do not like that. It kind of hurts. And again, I have met a man who does enjoy this. Do you enjoy this? Certainly not. <laughs> so um, so she, Liz goes on to say, I'm out here having my very own sex talk with my kids. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm listening to my 100th episode of You 2 Heart, heart, heart. Well, let me just question as to... Where or why or how did they come up with that question? I don't know. I don't know. Because are they watching porn and some porn sites think that, you know, they show guys liking that crap? Some guys know. do like that. So maybe they're watching some little I'm not yucking stuff. anybody, John, but I have yet in all my sexual encounters with men, I have never met a guy that liked having their balls stepped on, <laughs> uh, kicked at, or maybe spit on maybe, but none of the other... They, yeah, they, really they like intense. them fondled maybe, but nobody likes anything that that sensitive being. It's you know. it's really intense. I've been to a few of these BDSM parties. You know, sometimes you can understand like, oh, wow, it's really interesting yeah. what what's going on. I can Hot see how wax that's, or that's, something that's, like that's that. attractive. That's arousing. But I, when I started seeing this guy getting his balls whipped, I was so like viscerally in pain for this man. Um, but I guess other people were turned on by it. So, you know. Teach their own. Don't yuck anybody's yum on that. that I'm fun. not yucking anyone's okay. yum. If you want to do that, go for it. I, I, yeah, by all means. Just wasn't for me. Um, Liz, to answer your question, she said, I'm really curious about Cam's progress on pleasuring his own asshole. <laughs> this is a very interesting question. And um, unfortunately, there's been no progress made since the last time that I failed to insert something into my asshole. Okay. Nothing has made it in there yet. And I will definitely keep you abreast of what happens. However, if you were going to insert something in your asshole, yeah. you need to use Uber Lube to save the day. Just sticking in a little Uber Lube action oh, right yeah. there. Oh, yeah. Uberlube.com slash mom. No, it's not. Uberlube.com. Use promo code mom. Use promo code mom and you get 10% 10 off and off free and shipping, baby. All our right. Our favorite lube. Anal, oral, vaginal. How about moving on to Johnny's text? Do you want to Johnny, read Johnny, hi, Cam and Karen Lee. I've never written to you before, but I am compelled to today because I'm listening to the current episode. And now I know why you want oh, what? to bring this up. Just keep going. Why, not? why I've stop there? I've heard the tale of two wolves before. He's referring to your last extremely boring... Cam's uppers? Cam's uppers, yes. Yeah. I wouldn't say it was so boring. No, it, was, I, I it, guess was, it, was, it wasn't that boring. I was just teasing. I guess Johnny says... Uh, Johnny liked it. Keep going, Mother. I'm very much... Uh, but I very much needed to hear it today. So oh, wait. Do you want to repeat that sentence one more time? I've heard the tale of two wolves before, but I very much needed to hear it today. And I'm going to huh. sum it up by basically saying that it, it's you can have positive thoughts and negative thoughts. And you can either think, you know... About focusing on the positive stuff or the negative, and with the tale of two wolves, is each wolf had their own way of doing things. That was not the fucking story. You butchered this. You mid Lin Manuel Miranda the story just now. You want to? Because if I turn it over to you, it's going to be another ten minutes. No, it's not. So I, let's like, wrap it up in a sentence or two. There are two wolves. Yes. One is all the positive thoughts in your life. One's all the negative thoughts. And which wolf survives? The one that you feed. Oh, the one that you feed. That's the part that I missed. That's the okay, key. That's Okay, but it was the, the same thing about the fucking positive and negative <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> okay. Okay, so Johnny apparently was Johnny had heard it and was grateful that we had talked about it again. Okay? So, yeah, and Johnny so Some was, of us appreciate me over here. Johnny apparently was thinking about negative thoughts, and when he heard the two wolves story, he decided not to feed the negative one. 
Keep going on, Mother. So thank you for bringing it to me. I even took notes. Ooh, I've often taken notes during your show, which I totally look forward to every week. I wonder if you took, took notes on any cougar thoughts that I've come up with. I don't yet. think so. And I don't even think that you should be assuming that Johnny is a male. Oh, good point. Well, Johnny, I've never heard of a female Johnny, but I guess you're right. Um, interesting here. Funny that I just brought up Uber Lube. I've purchased Uber Lube and the Satisfier product. Is it called the Curvy 2? Thanks for the heads on those. Anyway, I love the show. I'm 57 female from Oregon. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. Female Johnny. I think that's a great name. That's I'm fun. glad that you're enjoying those Uber Lube and Satisfier, the Curvy 2. I think that's... Two phenomenal products. Yeah, right there. if you want to get your own Satisfier product, there is also a code. Satisfier.com. Use code MOM40, M-O-M-4-0, I believe. Oh, that was a good one if you remember that one. But mm-hmm. you get another discount, a lot of discounts. And you can always find these discounts in our show notes on iTunes. Or wherever you're listening to this. Yeah. Julie says, so I've been seeing this guy for almost a year and we have great sex. I'm into being bitten and he's willing to oblige. I've gotten quite a few sex toys for us to play with. Handcuffs, vibrators, a flogger, and a few other things as well. He's not super into it using anything. (laughs) I'm 46 and he's 49, so I'd like to use lube every time at least, but he's just not into it. He's generous with oral, as am I, but I'd like to step it up a notch. Okay. So do you want to respond to that part first? Yeah. um, I love this girl. Julie is one hell of a little cougar. Persistent motherfucker. Yeah. Bringing all that shit. She's bringing it all on, and I like the fact that she... Not afraid to bring lube into the picture, whether it be Uber Lube or any other type of lube. I don't know why you wouldn't want to use lube. A lot of people don't like it because they feel like um, it, it's the same idea. Like if you you if you lubricate with your tongue or whatever, and they think it's just the same thing. But it's, the, most men have this idea. Women know that there's a value to lube. But what's the problem with using lube? Because it's not natural. I don't think this guy is not. You think it's is it something talking about his masculinity or something by having to use lube or something? Yeah. Or maybe they just don't want any kind of slip sliding away. Yeah, he might just like it rougher. Let's ask the sneaky freaks. What do you guys think of lube in general? Yeah. Are you guys you, fans of lube? Are you fans? Or are you thinking that it's only necessary when you're going through menopause? I mean, what, when do you need lube? 310-356-3920. Uh, we, she goes on to say, a few days ago, a friend of mine sent a video of a girl rimming a guy in a taxi cab. You know what that, mom? You know what that means? I do. For the sneaky freaks out there, rimming is it in this licking, situation licking is the girl asshole, licking the rim of this guy's asshole in a taxi cab. He, my boyfriend, liked it a lot. Uh, I have mentioned this to him before, and he was hesitant. Now he seems a little more open. Said he'd like to try. I've used my finger on him before in a small toy, which he likes both, but I think maybe a little too nervous to ask for it. Now I'm not dying to eat his ass, but would love to him to experience something awesome like that. Thing is, I know he won't ask me to say or ha- ask me or say tonight's the night. How do I lead into something like this? Should we stop right there? Yes. Well, first of all, I, um, I think she did a, a good idea by showing him some um, videos of porn where you know that those those things are done. I think it's very it opens sweet. up a conversation totally, and I think it's very sweet that she's like, I'm not so into licking, eating his ass, but I want him to experience something awesome. Right. It's very sweet. I might say though. He might like it a lot, and you might be doing it a lot. (laughs) So that may not be in your best interest. Uh, Who is this? Julie. Okay. Well, she she wants to know, how do I lead to to something like this? Because he's scared. He's probably not going to bring this up to her. Right. I I think you need to just talk about it. Say, hey, how about that rimming video? You want (laughs) to try that little taxi cab tonight? I think, why not? I think you're right. Let's do a little role play. You play a taxi cab driver. Yeah, or maybe that's a good call. the person in the back of the taxi cab, pretend like we're swerving all over the place, and somehow, t- you know, they take a sudden turn, yeah. and the person in the back seat starts flying around, and my ass, the ass is up in the air. Here's a problem. The- <laughs> <laughs> all right, you disregard the entire visual. No, I'm thinking. Well, where, where, where are you going down that lane? I'm where? just thinking the guy, the taxi guy, is swerving around traffic, and boom. Suddenly, the person in the back seat is tipped over, and the ass is exposed. And right. then she goes in and she licks it. Is this your fantasy? No, but I just think that's a funny way to get at, get involved with Meanwhile, it. Meanwhile, who takes cabs anymore? That is a good question. I don't know. Someone's rimming in the cab. 
Okay, so here's what I'm thinking though. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> She's going to be eating asshole all day long. Yeah, I guess so. When, well, uh, see, in the past, men were concerned that if they liked anything in their asshole, they were considered gay. Right. And there was such a stigma against it that most men now have this macho idea, like, I can't tell my partner that I want this because they, they might think that I'm gay. Yes. So I think that just get the gay off the, you know, just say, hey, I listen to sex talk with my mom. And they're talking about getting their asshole eaten and stick, Kim's trying to stick shit up his <laughs> asshole all the time. He's not gay. We're in, we can we're try in this. 2021 over here. You stick something up there. And this person, Julie, goes on to say he's a man's man and doesn't like to be submissive, but willing to try that role. So I think I should dominate him at some point and do it all at once. <laughs> How do I do that, though? I, I don't Without know. Without freaking out and embarrassing myself. Note, I'm a Libra and he's a Pisces. I'm the Libra, you're the Pisces. How's that? Thanks in advance for your help. I love your show and looking forward to your advice. I don't even know why it has to be a domination thing. If if he's into it, it can be something that he just wants her to do just for fun. And what's interesting is that you can, you can be like a, a power sub. Like you, can, he could remain macho, right? In in even if he's getting his you know played his asshole played with, it yeah. doesn't need to mean you somehow are stripped of your masculinity. Or she could say, "This is what I like if you do to me," and let him try it on her first. I just don't love the whole, you know. Licking at the asshole? No, no. Oh. I don't love the whole like, oh, I can't do this in the bedroom because it means that, you know, it, th my this is my sexual orientation or this is my masculinity or femininity. Just take it. Come on. Drop all the images and shit. Look at you, Mr. Open-Minded Cam. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I am. All right. All oh. right, moving right along. Amanda says, regarding my question last episode, I'm sorry, Karen Lee, but I agree with Cam. I, I absolutely am looking at my body if I'm masturbating in front of a mirror, much more so than my genitals. Looking at your own body is the best part. Thank you, mother. Okay. Wait, that wasn't... Okay, first of all, yeah. Amanda... Thank you. I, love I wasn't these texts. saying that you couldn't look at the rest of your body. I'm saying that a lot of women, especially women, mm -hmm. have no idea what their vagina or vulva or any of the thing below the waist looks like because it's not apparent unless you do sit down on a floor and put a mirror there or on the bed or wherever your mirrors are well she's looking at herself like i am so there's All no right. reason to laugh at me because uh, apparently there are people that do that masturbate look at the rest of their body like their you know stomach or whatever guys on the other hand have a dick out all the time they're always looking at it boring okay Jess says, I wanted to see how people feel about their partner going to strip clubs or hanging out with friends who order strippers. This weekend, my boyfriend's friend got a hotel suite and ordered a ton of strippers, and I felt super uncomfortable and insecure. I'm not sure if this is an overreaction on my end. I, she, we have discussed strip clubs before. My boyfriend actually worked in a strip club, as we know, as a bartender. Um, as we all know, and it is something that I was initially uncomfortable with, uh, for many reasons, uh, especially like if he was working, so it wasn't the same thing as actually like paying, like I'm always the practical one. I'm thinking you got 20 bucks to spend on some girl who doesn't give a fuck about Sounds you. Sounds like it was a lot of strippers. There's a yeah. lot more money than that. Yeah. I'll, you know, I'll put that money on me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> My concern reading this text is. Are the strippers wearing masks? Oh, my God, Cam. There's nothing to do with that. Yeah, that is very important here. All right. Assuming they're all wearing masks. or assuming this None is of not the strippers a, are wearing masks. Or maybe they did COVID tests beforehand, Cam. Forget that. You think they're all coming over? They're stripping off all their clothes except their masks? What about all the sweat and stuff that gets on you when they, they, they shimmy themselves all over you? It, 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 it's COVID flying everywhere. All right. Forget about the COVID. Just like it's the, the issue of is she being insecure? And I mean... It, I think this is a very it's a tough question case to answer. by case yeah. basis. Not only does it depend on the person, it depends the person is with. It also depends on the what's going on with the strippers. Are they fucking? Are they doing uh, just uh, you know just a, a little strip tease? Are they doing lap dances? What I saw some guy. This guy told me that there was a girl. She took out a, a can of whipped cream, and the guy sat in a circle, and then she put whipped cream on her boobs, and each guy licked it off. And he said, by the end, he was at the end. He's got all the germs from this prior. Oh. Yeah, but I, I think this is all whatever your the your own relationship allows for. If it's your agreement with this person, so if you don't feel comfortable with it, 
then that's your feelings. It's fine. Yeah. And you talk about it with the person, and you, you that's it. And they, and uh, they have to decide whether or not this is a game changer or yeah. a deal breaker. Exactly. It's yeah, fine. I, it has to be a discussion, and it's just the same thing. It could be anything. You discuss whether or not you should fuck other people. You should discuss or rimming whether, or rim. <laughs> Discussions are important. It's Discussions a, it's are a, key. My mother always said, marriage is a working contract. So let's just put, instead of marriage, relationships are working contracts. Your sex lives are working contracts. Yeah, and you always have to kind of adjust. That is true. You might be fine. You might not be fine with the, the strippers now, but it, it, maybe in two months from now, you'll be fine with it. Yeah. So it's a two working... Two months from now, you're like, hey, let him get his rocks off of the stripper and leave me alone. That's exactly right. <laughs> so don't judge yourself if that's how you're feeling, I'd say. But do talk about it. Yes. All right, Mother, I think we need to wrap it up. But I think there's one more text over here that I wanted to read. Tom says, Cam, I'm also reading Breath, and I think some naked breathing together would be a great warm-up to some hot sex. So, Mom, you are wrong. Breathing isn't boring. Okay. Okay. I I, I think that's a wonderful text to end on. Why is everybody... Someone's shitting on Mom constantly lately because I have difference of opinions about these goddamn woo-hoo Type woohoo! Uh, woohoo! Wait. You're the one that's constantly bringing in the woohoo tarot bullshit that no, leads me you're, into you're, f- questioning my whole life every time. No, I didn't say that. You picked those cards, okay? Let me just say that. But oh, I, you blame it on the. But picker. I'm talking about like you bring in all this breath work and everything, and yeah. the zabatan and the zubatis or whatever. What are those called? My zafu and zabutan. Yes. Yeah. This, this, this not to me. I mean, it's to some people, apparently to Tom. Are you yucking my yum? I'm not saying. Yeah, I'm just saying it dance to something, but it doesn't mean that I'm wrong here because I think you want to start out just some guy starts breathing in my face. I'm like, can we just get down to some sex? Well, that's where that's where we differ, mother. Yep. All right. I guess some people are into tantra thing. Okay, we got to wrap it up. We wanted to thank you to every a big big thank you to everyone who has left us a review wherever you're listening to this we had a beautiful review written oh i love beautiful reviews this one was uh on Cl- uh, on uh cast box from the monado 10 out of 10 podcasts now let me tell you about the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees and the greatest podcasts i've ever seen I've listened to around 300 episodes in the last three months, and I can't get enough. I feel down most of the time, but as soon as I turn on these great guys every day, I feel like two good friends are here to cheer me up. It inspires me to see two people experience life's troubles only to come out stronger, funnier, and amazingly great. Thank you so much for what you're doing, and I can't wait to see what you guys continue to do. Many thanks. The Monado. My mother has slapped herself silly just now. Oh, what a nice little review. The Monado, thank the you Monado, so much. The Monado, thank you. That is our goal, though, is to make this open to uh, the open discussion. We want we want the sneaky freaks interaction with us because it's no fun just us two talking about ourselves over here. And I think taking you know life's tragedies and turning them into something enjoyable. Right, and like to, working like, through them. Today is no exception with my one of my best friends passing away. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> I just <laughs> just turned went down that looping hall here. Thank you so much for the Monat the Monato for that review. And if you'd like you. to leave us leave us a review, we'd really appreciate it. It really helps us out. Uh leave us a review at ratethispodcast.com slash mom. And thank you to all our sneaky freaks on Patreon. Oh uh, my god, our Patreon members are our fave little sneaky freaks. We do uh monthly zoom calls with everyone it's super fun it's such a sweet sweet community of people that we look forward to talking with every month and you get access to some bonus content that's seen no other place besides patreon yes so it's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash sex talk with my mom and our last announcement which we mentioned earlier is that we are doing a very fun live show with games and prizes on february 18th at 8 p.m. Pacific time on Clubhouse. To get an invite to that, just text us at 310-356-3920. That's the first line in the episode description. And then you get texts from us from from that point on. It's really fun. And let me tell you about the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees and choking out the chicken in front of horses. Oh, my God. That was pretty damn good. Choking out the chicken? Yeah. In front of horses? Yeah. You got to admit, that was on a better How ones. long were you sitting with that oh, one? Oh, it's been, it's been fermenting. It's been, <laughs> it's been brewing since the horse this discussion. Since the horse discussion. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, that was a good one, Woot. Thank you. All right. Thank you for listening. We love you, you little sneaky freaks. We love you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.